that famous year when lovely ladies get a break. In other words, it's leap year. Well, forgive me, ladies, just this once if I hand out a tip to the bachelor. And that is, look before you leap, boys. Look into the important matter of food. And if she can't make biscuits and can't make pies, just be sure she does know about Jell-O. For a shimmering mold of glowing Jell-O has saved many a meal. That's because Jell-O tastes so good, full of extra rich fruit flavor, real fruit flavor as refreshing and appetizing as fresh ripe fruit. That fruit goodness is sealed right in. It's full-bodied and satisfied. But just remember, you won't find it in any other gelatin dessert. No other has Jell-O's luscious, extra-rich flavor. There is only one Jell-O, and only Jell-O tastes twice as good as ever before. I'm terribly sorry to announce that Mary Livingston will be unable to appear on tonight's program owing to a very sudden attack of laryngitis, which has resulted in the complete loss of her voice. But she will be with us again next Sunday night. Oh, Timmy, uh, I didn't see Johnny leaving the office. Where is he? I don't know, Don. I don't see Jack around either. Well, this is a fine state of affairs. wonder what could have happened to them. I saw them get into a car about an hour ago. hope they didn't meet with an accident. Maybe that's them. Hello. Oh, hello, Jack. Where are you? There you are. Well, how did it happen? Well, don't worry. We'll come right over. What's the matter, John? Why, Jack and Johnny were arrested for speeding and knocking over a telegraph pole. Gee, isn't that awful? <laughs> hey, uh, Underwood, uh, tune in the county jail and see if you can pick up Jack Benny, please. Okay. If I had the wings of an angel, da dum 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 dee, da da da. Hey, you in cell number six? Shut up. All right, say, what are you in for, buddy? I'm the keeper here. Oh, pardon me. Say, what do you get to eat here? Bread and water. What? No Jello? <laughs> the fine jail. Hey, Johnny, where are you? Up to seven. Oh, you couldn't get a lower, huh? <laughs> Quiet, you mug. All right. Hmm, who does he think he's talking to? What a jail. I feel like a quarter in Don Wilson's pocket. I'll never get out. This way, miss. Here's the guy you want. Talk at a distance and make it snappy. Why, it's Mary's sister. Hello, Mamie. What happened to Mary? She's got Lauren's eyes, Jack, and she sent me over to see if I could do something for you. What happened? Well, we left Johnny's house driving right to the studio, and we were only going 72 miles an hour. Gee, they can't put you in jail for that. They can't? Where do you think I am, in Bermuda? <laughs> of course, we had a slight accident. I ran into a telegraph pole. Gee, this is a nice room you've got, Jack. Did you have to take a leap? Yes, yes. Where's Johnny's room? In the next cell. Oh, Johnny. Hello. Here's Mary's sister. You remember Mamie? Oh, sure. Hello, Mamie. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> uh, what are you laughing at? Hey, look at Johnny's haircut. It reminds me of a popular song. Well, what do you mean? It's round and round. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's round and round. Stop clowning, will you? Say, Mamie, can't you do something to get us out? I don't want to stay here all night. Yeah, don't you know anybody? Sure, Jack. I know one of the biggest politicians in town. He's a great friend of mine, and he'll get you out in no time. Where's the phone? There's one over in the corner there with a ball and chain on it. Okay. Gee, I hope you can do something, Johnny. So do I. Hello, operator. Get me Michigan 4099. Yes. Gee, it was nice of Mary to send her over, maybe. I'll say. Hello, is this you, Matt? This is Mamie. Yes. Yeah. How are you, you big palooza? <laughs> 
Uh, the Zinz Jolly, isn't it? Hey, Matt, where did you go after you left the drove last time? Oh, did you? <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Get to the point, Mamie, will you? What's that? Sure. Oh, sure, I'll be glad, too. See you next Friday night. Thanks, Matt. Goodbye. <laughs> Why, Mamie, I thought you were going to fix it for me. Oh, gee, I forgot to ask them. Oh. But don't worry, I've got to take you to the next time. Well, there he is, young fella. Now talk quick and make it snappy. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Yeah, I'm sorry to see you here. Me too. There's Johnny in the next cell. Hey, Kenny, you live here in Los Angeles. Can't you do something for us? Sure. I know the biggest politician in town. Where's the phone? Never mind. We just had that. <laughs> Say, Jack, I heard you were going to be here a long time, so I brought you a copy of Anthony Adbert. Anthony Adbert? Thanks, Kenny. You see, Jack? You think you had bad luck? Anthony Adbert. Mm. You should have had laryngitis instead of Mary. Well, I'm just trying to cheer you up, you little punk. Hey, uh, Keeper, I want to see Jack Benny and Johnny Green. Well, there they are. Now make it snappy. Oh, hello, Don. Yeah, I'm glad you dropped over. Uh, I don't see you, Jack. Where are you? Right here in cell six. Well, don't forget the jello. Cell six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Even in jail, I get that. <laughs> oh, Don, can't you do something for us? Certainly, Jack. I've made arrangements with the judge so that you can broadcast from here for your next two options. That's fine. Where's the microphone? Right here. Well, give it to me. Stand by, Kenny. Well, hello, folks. This is the J Lo program. And Kenny Baker will now sing Little Rose of the Rancho from the motion picture Rose of the Rancho. Please sing, Kenny. prisoners applauding. That was Little Rose of the Rancho, sung by Kenny Baker, coming to you from the grill room of the county jail. That was very nice, Kenny, but you were behind two bars of music. That's better than being behind eight bars like you are. Oh. 
Come on, visitors, your time is up. Who, me? No, your time is my time. Well, uh, see you later, Jack. We'll see what we can do. Uh, so long, Don. Bye, Johnny. Bye. So long, so long. So long. Hey, Johnny, there's some awful-looking characters in this jail, aren't there? I'll say. Look at that colored fellow over there in the opposite cell. Yeah, I wonder what he did. Hey, son. You calling me? Yeah. How long are you in for? I'm here on parole. Never worked in my home. Hey, you must have done something. What are you in for? Well, they gave me 15 years for drawing money out of a bank without a bank book. They did? Yeah. Then they gave me 20 years for stopping the man that tried to stop me. No kidding. Then they gave me seven years for toting a razor without shaving cream. Hmm. Well, is that all? No. Gave me 30 days more for just being no good. Oh, say, what's your name? Clarence New. Clarence New? Say, wait a minute. Listen, I saw you in a picture. Yeah. You gave me ten more years for that. <laughs> That's too bad. I sure is in trouble. Well, so are we. This is the worst mess I was ever in. Oh, Johnny, it isn't so bad. My father and mother will be worried sick. Gee, it's a tough spot for me. What's tough about it? Sure we're in trouble. But listen, fellas, all of you prisoners, I can tell you a story I heard the other day that'll make you glad you're living. Jailer knows it. Have you got a minute? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen to this. It's one of the saddest stories you've ever heard. This will make you glad you're living. Listen. Once, there were three lobsters living up in Maine. A mother lobster, a father lobster, and a baby lobster. Eating, eating, and leading a healthy outdoor existence. When one day, the baby lobster was caught and taken away from its parents. Mm. For 20 years in that, they'd given up hopes of ever seeing their baby again. And one day when they were in Rhode Island visiting some relatives, the father and mother lobster were caught and thrown into the window of a seafood restaurant. When lo and behold, right in front of them, they saw a great big giant lobster, the largest one in the entire window, loafing on a piece of ice. They recognized him immediately as their long lost son. So they had a great reunion. <laughs> Finally, the mother lobster said, Son, tell me, how is it in all these 20 years you managed to keep out of hot water that you weren't eating? And the son replied, I'll tell you, Ma, I'm the big lobster that the waiter always shows the customer that the customer never gets. <laughs> Isn't, isn't that sad, Johnny? Yes, Jack. That's the worst story I've ever heard. Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack. Hey, just a minute, miss. You can't come in here whenever you please. Who said? I'm a taxpayer. Mamie, Mamie, did you do anything? Did you get us a lawyer or something? Oh, yes. I knew I had something to say. I got the best lawyer in town. Now you're talking. He's a criminal lawyer. He is? Yes, he's just out of here every day. Well, all right, anybody, for heaven's sake, go and get him. Huh? Wait a minute, Jack. Mary just gave you a nice cake and sent it over. Here. Oh, thanks. Say, did anybody see a bunch of keys around? Keys? Not me, Keith. Did you lose them? Quiet, Jack. They're in the case. I got a gang of musicians who were found loitering on Hollywood Boulevard. Say, who's got my keys? I haven't. Well, give me that cake. That'll do. Oh, all right, here. Come on, you guys. Get in there. Why, well, Jack. Jack, that's my orchestra. It is? Yeah, I knew they'd get in trouble without me. Say, wait a minute, where's the piano for Johnny? That's in the case, too, Jack. Well, what are we waiting for? Eat, John.
Hey, you. What's the idea of calling those bars? Oh, pardon me. I'm just killing a little time, that's all. <laughs> you know, there's really nothing to do around here. I, if I cause any damage, I'll be, I'll be glad to pay for it. Huh? Oh, yeah? Say, where did you get that saw? I gave it to him. I belong to a sawing circle. Mm -hmm. The veins of a flower. Oh, 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 pardon me, she found Mr. Jack Benefit here. Yeah, here he is in cell number six. Well, 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 hello, Sandra. Hello. 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 Yeah, which one are you? Clarence Barrow. Oh. Now, baby face Benny. Baby face Benny. Now, please, explain the whole situation. What did you do? Well, uh, I was driving my car, and I, uh... You didn't do it. Oh, yes, you did. We have three witnesses. Mamie, will you please go home? Now, give me a rough idea what happened. I want the full details. <laughs> well... I was driving 72 miles an hour and ran into a telegraph pole. You were going 15 miles an hour and ran into a footstick. Remember that. Well, how do you know? I got three witnesses coming from Chicago. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, the judge will ask you plenty of questions. Like, for instance, uh, where were you on the night of April 12th at a quarter to five? Well, I don't remember. That's it. But supposing he asked me questions about the accident. You don't remember. Listen, I was driving 72 miles an hour and I knocked down a pole. Don't be foolish. You wasn't driving and the pole knocked you down. <laughs> yeah, but what if the car proves different? Then we'll give a, a hit his coffin. What's that? $10 extra. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll get you out of this. I just won my last case. Who was it? A fellow was parking his car in front of our hydrant and I got him over 10 years. Do me a favor, will you go over there and defend Johnny Green? Where is he? Right there in the next cell. Oh, oh, you're Johnny Green, I'm presuming? Yes. Well, what didn't you do? I don't remember. Likewise. <laughs> you want me to handle your case or not? I'd sooner have an aspirin. Well, that's out of my line. Now, Mr. Bailey, I already talked to the judge on the way over here, and he said he'd find you boys three dollars a piece and close the case. Well, then what are you waiting for? Three dollars a piece of ice. He's got to make it two for five or nothing. I'll pay him the six dollars and get us out of here. Let me do the worrying, please. But sometimes I go there for three months and worry about a case like this. <laughs> of course, you know, I got to get my usual retainer. So what do you get? Twelve dollars. You know, stationary stamps and incidentals. Well, here, all I got is five dollars. All right, I'll sue you for the balance. <laughs> Well, where can I get you if I want you? So far. <laughs> I'm stopping here, too, you know. <laughs> but please, don't worry about anything. Look there, there's a piano over there, and I bend the music. Cheer up and play something. Come on, prisoner, try to sense the time. Let me do the worrying. Run around and around. Ho, ho, ho. Give me up, Napoleon. <laughs> Thank you.
That was Music Goes Round and Round with Johnny Green of Seattle. And now we take the microphone to the courtroom for the trial of Jack Benny and Johnny Green. Uh, order in the court. Good morning, Dad. Where do I know you from? I read your magazine. <laughs> Mamie, you're in a courtroom. Sit down here with me. I will now call the case of Jack Benny and Johnny Green versus the telegraph pole. That's us. Is your attorney here, Mr. Benny? Good morning, Your Honor. If it pleases the court, I'll sit down. <laughs> it seems that a certain Jack Benny and a certain Johnny Green were driving 72 miles an hour and ran into a defenseless telegraph pole. Is the attorney for the poll here? He's crazy. Then I will call the first witness. John Wilson. Mm, that sounds familiar. Well, what is your occupation, Mr. Yesterday. Wilson? I am a salesman for Jell-O, the largest selling gelatin dessert in the world. Ah. Are you acquainted with the defendant? Yes, Your Honor. What kind of a fellow is Jack Penny? Well, uh, Judge, I don't know just how to describe him, but if you ever see two men sitting in a cafe and one of them reaches for the check, the other one is Jack Benny. <laughs> Check to check, some joke. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like one of Mary's jokes. Yes, he gave it to me. <laughs> Order in the court. Where's Johnny Green? Oh, he went home. I don't blame him. Well, that's all, Mr. Wilson. I will now call the defendant. Mr. Benny, take the stand. <laughs> Thank you. A funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio. Quiet. Uh oh. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you? I object. Objection overruled. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you? I don't remember. <laughs> Is that right, lawyer? Precisely. Hmm. Were you or were you not stepping on the gas at the rate of 72 miles an hour? I don't remember. You'll have to ask my foot. <laughs> what do you mean you don't remember? I object. Why do you object to that question, attorney? That's embarrassing to my clients and unprofitable to me. <laughs> Next witness. Miss Mary Livingston, take the stand. She's got laryngitis. I'm taking your place. What do you want, sour puss? <laughs> you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, 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 nothing but the truth. You need a new needle, Judge. How long have you known the defendant, Jack Benny? I object. How am I doing, Judgey? Now tell me, young lady, what is your occupation? I wash dishes and double for Mary Livingston. Were you or were you not with Jack Benny at a party this afternoon? I object. What right have you to object? He don't remember. <laughs> is, that, is that right, Jack? Precisely. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, attorney. Didn't I once send you to San Quentin for grand larceny? You got me that time, Judge. Uh, it's awful warm in here. I think I'll go home. I object. It wouldn't help you. Goodbye. Now, Mr. Benny, didn't you have to leave Waukegan, Illinois, in a hurry in 1912? Now, I object. Say, listen, Judge. Didn't you attend a party in Culver City last night and was a pretty wild affair? I object. And when you got home that night, didn't you try to open your door with a shoehorn? I object. Oh, you do, eh? And weren't you seen at the Pocadero last Wednesday night with a beautiful blonde? I object. It was Mary. Oh, yeah, then I object. <laughs> order, order. Order in the court. How much time we got left, Judge? Only about three minutes. Are there any more witnesses? Yes, Johnny Green's orchestra. Take the stand, boys. Order. What were you boys doing this afternoon between the hours of four and five? Tell them, boys.
forget the first bicycle I ever had. I was nine years old, and boy, did I think that bike was a prize. All nice and shiny and new, and painted in great big letters on it was the legend, Ease and Speed. Well, that's one thing bicycles and Jell-O have in common. Jell-O is one of the easiest and speediest desserts you can make. For instance, for a tip-top wintertime dessert, try jellied orange dessert. Here's what you do. Cut four oranges into sections, combine with a cup of sugar, and let stand for about ten minutes. Then dissolve a package of delicious fruity orange jello and pour over the fresh oranges. Chill and serve in turbot glasses. It's grand, bright and gay and sunny to look at and delicious to eat. And you'll hardly know where the fresh fruit stops and the jello starts, for jello is crammed full of real fruit flavor. Extra rich, twice as good. Just be sure you get the one and only genuine jello. the 17th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And you know, folks, Mary, with her laryngitis, has been here all the time listening to this program. How did you like it, Mary? I can't talk. See, now I can. See, I told you. Good night, folks. took my breath away is from the picture Coronado and got a brand new suit is from the production at home abroad. This program has come to you from the new NBC studios in Hollywood. This is a national broadcasting company.